What's up everyone, my name is Will from Ghost Hack and today I'm going to be showing you my technique of vocal chopping in FL Studio. Now a lot of people believe vocal chopping to be a rather tedious process. It is in some ways, but if you do it correctly and you find efficient ways to do it, it can be a lot less tedious and a lot more kind of easygoing and just really sort of musical in its creation and not so much engineering and focused on every single little thing and lining up every audio file. It doesn't have to be that complicated if you find the easy ways to do it. So this is a bit of the vocal acapella. Uh, this is just the first acapella that comes with the ultimate summer vocals volume 2 that's available on the ghost hack website link in description but I just chose out these two spots and this is what they sound like don't know why we keep going around and around in the same place can't decide to live my life on the ground going out of space memory I added in that memories part at the very end because I thought it had a really nice long sustained note that was very strong and I think I can use it later. But basically what we have to do with this is record it out into one audio file first off. Okay, so now we have all the vocals in one audio track right here in an Edison. This is the important part. What we have to do is we have to open up a uh, new plugin which is gonna be the Fruity Slicer right here. This is a small, very, very simple plugin, I, but I, I love it a lot. Like I use it for all my vocal chops and all the vocal loops that I do. Real simple, easy to understand, as you can see right here. So we're just gonna drag the file and drop it right there. So now as you can see, it has made a lot of kind of cuts and chops and slices all along this, uh, all along this audio file. Mm -hmm. But it's actually very ineffective to use right now because if I were to play a part, it just ends, you know, when I'm done holding it. Like, what if I want it to last longer? This is more apparent in these short parts. Like, that's kind of useless. So what we have to do is we have to hit play to end. So now it'll play through the whole thing. But there's another problem we have. Let's say I held down this note. You hear in all those little clicks and pops in between in the middle that wasn't there in the original audio file because it's not smooth you see how this kind of fades out right here see the first thing we have to do is you have to uncheck declick there we go now it's not faded out anymore and then we also have to bring this decay down because that will cause a little bit of you know declicking as well you see if i bring up the decay then it has a little tail We don't want to do any of that, so we're taking this all the way down. And now there's only one other problem we have left. There's not enough lines. So we can use these right here to really control the amount of lines we have. Let's see, the low adds adds a, adds a significant amount of lines, and the high adds a ton. So we like, we like a ton. You see where it says a ton of lines, you like it. It can sometimes be hard to deal with, but you will enjoy it in the end because it will allow you to, to customize your vocal loop a little better. Now, those are a lot of little chops. Like these are a ton of little chops right here. As you can see, we have tons. We have almost 100. And this is more than I usually work with. I'm gonna say right now, I have a long audio file here. It does not have to be a 100 different chops. Like you can make it a lot less. As a matter of fact, I actually didn't. I took out this last part right here that said memories because I thought it was just a little too much. I thought I had enough to work with here in total with the rest of the file so now this is our the amount we have now we have 85 now it automatically creates this little train here to try to play the vocal back as smoothly as possible we can just delete that we really don't need that now you have all the chops and now we can create a pattern not really worrying too much about the pitch of the actual piano roll now this is where a lot of creativity comes in i can't necessarily teach you how to be creative but i can show you what it's like during my creative process i basically just want to make find some simple sort of catchy rhythm create a form of call and response which i will go over in a second and then just sort of add other things in the middle that make really cool chops and interesting effects that people will like all right so i made this uh, short little loop thing right here and this is basically made just by me clicking around that's the root note i really wanted to start with that and then i saw that these right here had some really nice, just solid tones down at the bottom, and we're gonna get to the stuff up at the top. 
a little more, but uh, so I wanted this to happen. I kind of wanted to play almost a melody with this right here. Just by holding the notes down and do a little pattern that is easily recognizable. And then the intro could be like a little bit different here with a little fast motion going on. And now I have a basic idea of what, what I want to do. However, I want to change the pitches a little bit because I don't necessarily like them. They sound very similar. So I'm going to open this up. I'm going to go control find pitch. I want to change this. So now I moved this one up and I brought the pitch down a little bit here. And now we can delete it and make some changes to this next part because we're going to make a call. And then this part is going to be the response. And what the call and response means is basically like there's two different sides to a melody and together they flow together and almost have a musical conversation. Like this is what makes songs sound catchy a lot of the times is just this sort of call and release. And let me just make the other part and then I can show you exactly what like I'm talking about with this call and release stuff. All right, so here's the little second part. And it has similar elements to the first part in this, in the sense that the first one part is a little crazy. And then this last part is a little bit different. The first part sounded like it still carries some kind of melody, but it's a little bit different. So now we have uh, a call which is all of this right here, and something a little bit different, which is the response to that call. It's sort of how the music talks to, to itself. So it sounds like this. And it all kind of flows together. So let me duplicate this section right here. I can just slap it on right there and make some more changes. So the first thing that I did with this second part is kind of flip these around. So this right here is happening at the beginning and is followed by this. So instead of going, it now goes, and I changed the uh, pitch of this guy right here. Before it was normal and then it goes down, but now it goes up and goes to normal. Just a slight change from the original because I want to keep it pretty similar in that part. Except now I actually want to switch these. Actually, let's try moving these around. All right, so now we have this little thing at the end. And this is where it kind of differs from everything else a little more drastically. It still has kind of a melody thing happening at the end, but I wanted it to be a little more crazy and a little just different from everything else just to wrap up this bar. In fact, all you have to really do to make things a little more interesting in this scenario is let's say we just cut this in half. Yeah, something like that could make a pretty neat variation. Yeah, that works out pretty good. All right, so this vocal chop thing actually turned out pretty all right. And now I'm going to throw just a couple effects of effects on it right here. We're just going to route this into, let's just use it in two. We use one for recording. First thing we're going to need definitely is an EQ to do this. There we go, just cutting off all that uh, low end that we really do not need. And you could, if you wanted to, uh, add a little bit of bit crushing. This is a free bit crusher I got offline, but most DAWs have free ones that come with them. As a technique that's used by a lot of people, I do not specifically want to use it right now, but I'll tell you what I do want to add. I do want to add a little bit of OTT to bring it out more.
There we go. That sounds pretty cool. The next thing I'm going to add is a little dimension expander. This is free from uh, Expert. Don't just to give the vocals a little bit of width. And then we're also going to add a reverb. Next, what I'm gonna do is add this distortion right here and I'm just gonna mix it in a little bit, probably about right there. And this is going to make it sound crisper and sharper. It's very good if you're making uh, like AEDM electronic stuff like this, adding in a little bit of distortion and saturation like that can make a big difference. So without further ado, here's the final vocal chop loop that we created. All right, that wraps it up. Thank you guys so much for watching this tutorial. I hope you learned a thing or two about vocal chopping inside FL Studio, and I really hope you will take vocals, whether that be ghost hack vocals or any other vocals you have, and throw them into Fruity Slicer and see what kind of stuff you can come up with, because it really is fascinating. Again, the vocal that I used in this video was one of the acapellas from the Ultimate Summer Vocals Volume 2, which is out on Ghost Hack, the link in the description. We really appreciate all your support, and I will see you in the next video. Happy producing. Oh,